Hey guys, Omar here, and today I'm gonna to share my thoughts about the Fuji X-T30. If you've stumbled upon this channel, uh, I am a huge user of the Fuji X-T20. I actually started my channel based on this tiny camera. And the reason I started my channel, those of you that have been here for a while know this story, but I got tired of bringing this on vacation, travel, just to the coffee shop. So I love my Fuji X-T20 for its size. This is like my everyday camera. It's mine. I bought it. I throw it everywhere. I bring it everywhere. I do family updates on here. Do it again. Look at my son, buddy. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't seen my video on making more home movies, I'm going to link that here. And that's what's great about these cameras. You can throw them in a bag. They're great for travel, great for street photography. Right now I have this little 27 millimeter pancake lens on there, and it just makes it a really fun, pocketable camera to bring everywhere with you but its size may be a negative for some of you. So let's discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly according to just me. All the great things I love about the Fuji X-T20 are here, except for this one thing which I'll get to. But if you're just starting your research or you just stumbled upon this video, let me give you the general loves and complaints about these small cameras, the X-T20 and also this X-T30. First of all, image quality is out of this world, especially for those of you that don't wanna like process RAWs, you just wanna shoot JPEGs. The Fujifilm system is amazing for that. You can like pick film simulations that exist. They actually emulate real films that Fujifilm has created and you really don't need to post-process that much. So if you're someone that's coming from like processing RAWs and not getting what you want out of your camera, then if you're a JPEG shooter, oh, awesome. Second is price. I love that the X double digit is always cheaper than the single digit one, but inherits a lot of the features from the big brother. So the Fuji X-T30 has a lot of features from the X-T3. Now I did find it interesting that the uh, Fujifilm actually handicapped, they pulled the cannon. I know when the X-T20 came out, it had almost everything the X-T2 had. The X-T30 actually is handicapped in video a little bit, like it doesn't do 4K 60. And also the X-T20 uh, had a D-pad and the X-T2 has a D-pad. And I found it interesting that the X-T30 uh, does not have a directional pad. They actually changed the design a bit. Next, I've never heard any reviewer or anyone reviewing these cameras complain about the dials or the tactile feeling you get from shooting a Fujifilm. I mean, these dials, they're just fun to shoot. There's something about like switching the dials that gives you just a nice little experience, a tactile experience that, again, I haven't seen any reviewer be like, man, these dials suck. However, for my work photography, for doing portraits and events, I do prefer the larger cameras that all can be controlled using a thumb and a finger. And that also happens with my Sony a7 III. All right-handed controls. Not as fun, not as tactile, but fast, and it works great. Plus, because it's stealthy, small, fits in a little pocket, is easy to carry, you want to bring your camera everywhere. Negative, it feels stupid in your hand. It really does. You're holding it with like two fingers. It just doesn't feel good in the hands, right ladies? What? But the good thing is you can make it feel like the Fuji X-T2 or X-T3 by just buying an aftermarket grip. Now what I found was great that is I could make the camera feel like the bigger brother, but also when I wanted it to fit in a pocket, I could do that. So think about that. You can make it bigger or you can transform it into being tinier. However, if you're not gonna be buying the stuff, look at the Bigger Brothers X-T3, X-T2 actually have be better ergonomics or even the X-H1 has a better grip. I know it sounds stupid, but the auto switch is a game changer, especially if you're lazy <laughs> or if you're handing the camera off to someone else. I like the switch, the auto switch. You know, there's cameras that have a mode dial to go to auto. This one is flick with a finger and you can shoot video right away. You can shoot a quick picture right away. If you go with one of the bigger brother cameras, they're lacking in the auto. You actually have to switch each of the things to auto, your shutter speed, your aperture, the ISO dial. If you are a beginner, or if you're handing the camera over to someone, or please, for my video updates and video diaries, I switch it to video and hit that auto switch. That's one of my love features on these cameras. XE2 has that, XT20 has that, and the XT30 has that. 
Auto. Okay, the complaints. The general complaints of these cameras are battery life only has a one card slot and it's also in the worst place, especially if you put a little tripod mount on here, you have to take the tripod mount out, you have to open up the battery. Getting your card out is a pain. There's no dedicated ISO dial, although you can set a button to be your ISO, although there's a lack of buttons on this camera. We'll get to that. Another complaint has a 2.5 headphone jack. People hate that. I hate that because you have to have an adapter. <sighs> there's no weather sealing. So on my trip to Costa Rica, I was super nervous. There's no image stabilization. So any video you do cannot be done well with the 16 millimeter 1.4, which is a great lens, it would be too shaky. So I have to use my 18 to 55, which has optical stimu stimulation. <laughs> Stabilization. Stabilization. Uh, so that's something to think about it is I know when I'm gonna do video on these cameras, I have to check what lens. So IBIS is nice, especially on the Sony cameras. I'm shooting this on a 6400. Ooh, that could be a video. And the other complaints people always have is there's no screen to see yourself and the EVF is super tiny, it really is. And by the way, a lot of stuff didn't bother me on the Fuji X-T20 until I got an X-T2. When I walked casually to the store and picked up the X-T2 just to look into it, it was like, oh, the viewfinder is so much larger, clearer on the X-T2, X-T3 than these little guys. Obi gaby Besides those general loves and hates, let me point out some things from using it in the last few weeks that I love and the stuff I don't love so much. Number one, if you're coming from a Fuji X-T10 or X-T20, it's gonna be very familiar, except for one feature. We'll get to that. It's still small, it's still fun. Uh, it's wonderful to throw in a bag to go street photography. I know I said it in the general loves, but the images are still beautiful. The film simulations are fantastic. So nothing lost there. Love just taking the JPEGs, Urgh, wonderful. Two, the second thing is it's made my older lenses, uh, like slower focusing lenses, like my 56 1.2, a little snappier because of the new processor in the X-T30, it will make your slower lenses, your 1.2s, your 1.4s, it'll make them all that little snappier. Now note, I'm mostly photography, mostly portrait, so stuff isn't like action and going crazy. Uh, so I don't see a lot of differences between the X-T20, X-T2 and this. I'm sure if you're doing bird photography or if you're shooting super fast motorsports that the X-T30 is going to be better than the X-T20. But for my uses, I really didn't see a huge jump or a jump that I would use. So keep that in mind. If you're just taking pictures of flowers and stuff, I mean the X-T20, X-T10, man, your iPhone for God's sakes is going to be good enough. Next, the second big feature that I loved, oh my God, loved in the X-T30 is the 4K face detection. With the older cameras, I'd have to switch to 1080p if I was doing a diary update or filming myself. I love shooting in 4K. I love having, if we're traveling, the higher resolution. I love the future proofness of that when our TVs are like 19K. So quickly for photography, I recommend it of course. But I think with an X-T2 and an X-T20, you could do a lot of the same stuff. I don't think you need the new processor and the new, um, what is it, sensor. <laughs> so you'll be happy if you're gonna pick it up. You're gonna love the image quality of it. The, the, did I even say something there? You're gonna love the image quality out of it. You're gonna love features like it has a sport mode feature, which lets you zoom in and get about 30 frames a second if you shoot sports. It has something called the chrome effect, which can um, protect some of the reds or pinks in uh, like flower photography. It has this cool feature called pre-shot. It actually will take some frames beforehand. If you're shooting electronic shutter under high burst, it'll actually take some frames before. So if you're shooting, if you think like a whale is gonna breach, you could be like <laughs> and get the moment where it comes out. Although you wouldn't want its nose coming out, would you? Yeah, that's a stupid example. For video though, this is a huge step above the X-T20. If you want advanced video features for $500 less than the X-T3, I sound like a commercial there. Side effects include bleeding and diarrhea. Since I only do casual family videos, I probably don't appreciate how powerful this is, but as stuff like vlog and 4K, slow motion, one 1080p at 120 with the Eterna and the, um, 100 MPS. 
Anyway, if you want to find out more about video, I'll link someone else up below. Okay, and why wouldn't you get this camera? Okay, after using it for more than three weeks, there has to be something said about the usability of a camera. And I feel like this camera was a step sideways for that. I didn't think it was a big deal, but the removal of the buttons to me made the camera less fun to use. Now, I'm not super anti-touch if the touch is done well. On my Canon 5D Mark IV, the touch is so amazing, I can change flash powers, I can go through the menu really quickly, I can zoom into pictures, and there's never any glitches or any kind of strange motions. With the touch screen on the Fuji X-T20, sorry, yeah, X-T20 and X-T30, uh, they're slightly clunky. There's like a milli delay if you're going through things. So I don't feel like using the touchscreen is a great experience. And the removal of the D-pad has forced me to use the touchscreen to add more features because you can actually add swipe features uh, which give you more uh, feature features. Did I say features too much? Features. I do like that they added a joystick, but navigating through the menus with the joystick for me is not as great as with the D-pad. I do not like the joystick navigation. Now, some others have mentioned that you could use the dials to navigate up and to the right. I do not like that either. There's nothing better than a directional pad. And this is one way that the Fuji X-T30 to me is crippled over the X-T3. If you like buttons and tactile, go for the X-T3 or a used X-T20, X-T2. Or try this first to make sure that this is not gonna bug you because it bugs me 100%, okay? And second, ergonomic wise, it was a mistake, a full mistake for Fujifilm to put the Q menu on the thumb pad. I'd be surprised if future cameras have that as well. And I have a feeling they won't do it again because there's a firmware upgrade because people are complaining that this gets pushed accidentally. And the firmware is gonna allow you to turn it off but the Q menu button is fantastic. I use that all the time. And there's fixes. You could buy like a thumb thing that keeps your thumb. Up. Why do you gotta do that? I got a solution for you. It's called Q menu on the left. Fujifilm, you could have put the little joystick above this Q menu. There's still enough room, you know? We could have had the little joystick and the Q menu. Anyway, for me, the Q menu popping up accidentally really brought the joy of photography down just a level. I would recommend going and picking up the camera and seeing if your, your little fingers fit perfectly and won't bump. People in my comments have said they'd never bump the Q menu. So keep that in mind that it could just be me. This is just one person's opinion. So the Fuji X-T30, a fantastic camera with some issues for some of you maybe. I think if you are headed down the video road and want all the features from the X-T3 in a smaller package that's cheaper, $500 cheaper, then the X-T30 is for you. For me, since I'm mostly photography and I shoot the camera for photos, I am really not a fan of here. I would actually, if I'm in the market, go for an X-T3 over the X-T30. All right, let me know if you have any questions below and I'll see you guys next time.